So we got a lot of uh, spring melt happening. We're going for some nice mucky weather here. It's boot weather. It's definitely boot weather now. Uh, so just certain areas of my lot are very uh, spongy. They will uh, end up getting filled up, built up. But we cut down the trees here at the entrance. Well, they say there's no such thing as a small job. And it's very true. And just uh, here today to uh, wire up our temporary pole. And of course, if you see the amount of stuff we have, and we still don't have everything, but have a look. Tools and equipment and pipes and wires and boxes and breaker boxes and meter boxes and glue and last but not least a great big post to uh, attach it all to and I'm here today with uh, my dad Charles again and I'm really in luck as uh, <sighs> as uh, he's a retired electrician that decided to come out of retirement to help me wire the stuff up. So I'm very <laughs> grateful to him. Here goes the first crack. I might have to get you to uh, this back a bit. To uncork this. One of these. <laughs> One of those hard ones. Get her. Pretty bad. I don't know. I think my pliers might be yes. in that. And the first thing we are defeated by. There we go. in a long time.
Oh, no, because that'll be a pain. Oh, Showing them up. <laughs> Should have. This one will be okay. This one to lock. And that wouldn't cramp your style, eh? Yeah, well, we'll yeah. need another meter of weight. And need another. Well, we can put them in. Yeah. Got to pick up the the, uh, the the hook anyway. Yeah. So how'd you get into electrical work? When I was, uh, I worked at Chrysler Corporation back in the, the 60s and 70s, and I got on the electrical trade there, and I was on for, I was on for a year and a half, during which time I, I worked at, at that particular type of, uh, of wiring. Then we moved to Prince Edward Island and I got accepted into the Holland College program for uh, electrical construction and uh, it just went from there. Went through the apprenticeship, graduated in, graduated in uh, 85 I think I got it was when I got my license and uh, worked uh, worked a little bit as you know you were my helper a lot of the times yeah and I know you sent me up into a lot of small attics <laughs> and narrow spaces I'm telling you that there was there was a couple of jobs that we done that that really made me wonder if if I had made the right decisions but we got through them and had lots of fun, lots of quality time together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, and now you're getting the payback. <laughs> yeah, I remember that uh, that one particular job where you were in the attic. Scott was with us, and and we all had to squeeze into tight spaces. I think yours was the tightest, though. And yeah, it had to. Yeah, up with that lovely knob and tube stuff. Oh, I'm telling you. Look at that, my hands are getting so cold. It, uh, there we go. You've helped me take down a lot of trees too. Oh, what's your, uh, I'm what's your history with wood cutting? Well, when we moved back, when we moved back to Prince Edward Island, we had a big big house out in Birch Hill and we got a we got a wood furnace and uh, my oldest brother was living at the time and he had a he had some wood back at his place and uh, we needed to uh, we needed to uh, We needed wood, and he was burning wood, so we uh, we made a a trade-off. I uh, my brother-in-law and I, he, my brother-in-law, he was experienced in in this because he they had burnt wood all their life, and and anyway, we went into his place. And we cut the wood, wrong hole, but I figured. And uh, so we done it on the halves. We cut the wood, he gave him his portion, and we took ours. And that's how I got into the wood. And that's how we got into the wood. We cut down wood at his place for three or four years, or five years. Had lots of fun. Get a day off from work to go into the woods on a Monday when which seemed to be the the best day for everybody. And then 
then we sold that place six years ago seven years ago now and funny thing about it I was out working on the building and this Dodge truck Dodge SUV parked in the driveway and the fella hopped out of it and he uh, came walking in and he said to me I figured I better introduce myself to you because I figured we were out casing the place so it turned out that he was uh, the grandson of the man we had bought the house from and uh, he was telling me that he came home from Alberta every year he came home from Alberta he came up to see what we had done and what we were doing. And I invited them into the house and uh, see what we had done on the inside. And as we were walking through, he mentioned that he was looking at a house in Lot 16. And I asked him if he would like to buy the house. And uh, he said it's been my lifelong dream to own this house. What do you want for it? So I gave him the price that the real estate told us we could get and uh, he said I've got to go back to Alberta and talk to my wife and uh, some 10 days later the phone rang and it was them and they said your house is sold. So that's, uh, that's how we sold the house. And, in the place we now live in Summerside, the uh, friends of ours, they had moved in across the street and we went to, in to visit with them. And they showed us through the house and we said, oh, if when we move, if a place like this would come empty, it would certainly be nice. So, that's what, uh, took place. We, uh, we got to the, got to see the house, got to see the apartment. That was one of the few times that apartment that came available. Oh yes, empty. yes, because they, they are never, never, never empty very long and, uh, and so it went empty in the fall and we rented in the the first part of February <laughs> and uh, no we rented the last of February and we moved down to the house in May and no, and we've been there now for seven years. Okay, so we have our grounding plate here, which is attached to our grounding wire, which we'll have to bury our plate whenever we uh, put the post up. That comes up, and I got my two uh, plugs my two duplex plugs so I got four plug-ins have my two 20 amp circuit breakers here and uh, we'll have to put a covering slot in that and then I got my meter socket here and the meter is provided by Maritime Electric whenever they finally hook it up and then you walk all the way up to here and we got our three wires coming out that they will connect to and I still need to put a mount for uh, an eye bolt for them to hook their guy wire to and then this gets stuck into the ground about two feet and braced with four different braces to withstand the strain and maritime electric the local utility came along and they stuck a pole in the ground mind you this is only their temporary marking pole we are going to get a full size one here when they finally come to put it in and they've indicated to me that I need to cut down these three trees that are marked with the ribbon to allow for the power line to come into my building I'll get them cut down and I'm probably going to just end up putting my temporary mast 
in line with these trees right here. So my mast will be there and my building will be about 10 feet over roughly here where the second line of stumps is. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, please like, subscribe, and share.